This is Mitchell Zoller from Elsevier Global Medical News. I'm in New Orleans speaking from the American Heart Association Scientific Sessions. I'm speaking with Dr. Paul Kurlansky, who is a um, cardiac surgeon and also director of research at the Florida Heart Research Institute in Miami. Dr. Kolansky is reporting today about a study of about a thousand consecutive um, uh, elderly patients, octogenarians, who underwent um, coronary bypass surgery from 1989 to 2001, showing that the um, quality of life and the survival in those patients was um, comparable to patients who did not undergo surgery. Um, and, and so, Dr. Kolansky, what would you say is the um, message from these findings regarding doing surgery in octogenarian patients? The take-home message is this is, is actually three parts. Uh, part one is that now the mortality for surgery has dropped dramatically and is approaching that which we see for the general patient population with coronary artery disease. The second uh, point is that if you then follow these patients and go back and find out anywhere from one month up to ten years after surgery, how are they doing? What is their perception of their quality of life? It is excellent and it's actually comparable to an age match population uh, in the general population. And then thirdly, if you follow these patients even longer and see what is their long-term survival, uh, it is actually starts to match uh, the general population uh, over time. Mm -hmm. And so what does this mean in terms of a message to surgeons on treating these patients in their practice is that it, does age really get removed from the equation uh, on whether you're judging whether a surgery would be appropriate option? It's a fascinating point because actually there are some recent studies that uh, just came out in the last couple of years that have done statistical analyses which show that in, the, in certain hands age is no longer a risk factor for mortality. Um, that is not the general understanding but the point is that, uh, that with a certain attention to care uh, that these patients can be operated on safely and successfully. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, uh, the question then becomes, just because you can do it, does not necessarily mean you should do it. Yes. Uh, and so the next question you have to ask yourself is, what happens to these patients? You know, what well, the, the uh, gauge for surgery is survival, uh, and for heart surgery is survival. Uh, but it's a very and it's a very good gauge because it's a, what we call a hard endpoint. You know, <laughs> you, can, you can answer the question. It's a yes/no question. But from the standpoint of the patient, that's you really want to know more than I'm going to be alive. You want to know I'm going to be alive. I'm going to be functional. I'm going to be able to enjoy my life. I'm going to be able to have a certain quality of life. Uh, you know that you gave me. You know, five years of misery is not a big blessing <laughs> for. You know, it's not something that somebody is looking forward to. So really, the the next issue is what is the quality of life that patient has after surgery. And uh, that's why we were very careful. We were able to get 98% follow-up of the, all of these patients who were hospital survivors to find out what is their perception of their quality of life. We used a scale called the SF36, which is a very well-validated health scale uh, in the health industry or in the health research field. And what it measures is how the patients see their own health status. And uh, we were quite surprised to find that even though there were some fluctuations above and below the mean for certain uh, scales within this, the summary scale for both mental and physical health was equivalent to the age match population. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the take home message is that patients can benefit from this operation uh, and that age itself is no longer an impediment to providing these, offering these patients uh, this uh, alternative, this treatment. Yes.